All right, what is up, everybody? What's up, what's up, what's up? It's Tuesday, Tuesday, April 30th, Coil Class 7, Lesson 7. Holy shit. Holy shit, Lesson 7. Hope everybody's having a good day. Um, so, Coil Class is a live series of shows that I've been doing, where I've been seven, where we go through all coil building, one coil at a time from start to finish, show you every single coil, how I do them, how they're typically done, um, then we pull out some RDAs, install them, and um, move on to the next one. So today we got three of them, and they're all related to each other. Um, and it's basically flattening, flattening. And it's basically based around multi-core. So, first we're going to do a triple core fuse clapton because that would be next on the list. And then after that, I'll explain to you why I would go to the cat track. Now, I do have something, a couple things I want to show you during the show. One of which being something you could use besides a swivel, which would be a straw. Now, I'm having a real hard time setting this thing up with what I have. Um, it probably wouldn't be too hard if I got out some tape or something. But this clamp just does not want to grab onto this tube, which kind of sucks. Maybe if I flatten this tube, it would. But the only thing is, is flattening the tubes probably isn't the best idea. But if, let's say you didn't have swivels or you started doing stuff freehand, a straw or an empty pen is a great thing to use for coil building to help you out, especially with stuff that we're going to be doing tonight, like a three core or... Um, Basically three cores and stuff. If you want to make three core fuse claptons, this would be something you could use. So it's just a straw, and I'm going to set it up level with my drill. All right. So I'm going to use this for my three core fuse clapton. That's what I'm going to use. I'm going to use this, and it does not want to stay. So what I might have to do, because it doesn't want to stay, is tape it to this fucker. Because, mm, man, that would suck, though. What a pain in the ass this thing is. How come it was always e Oh, it was always easier because of the jaunt. That's right. Because of the thing, right? That's right. It was because of my different setup. Let me see if I could do it this way then. Vape vapes. I'm doing tricore fuse clapton right now, so just stick around and watch. How am I doing? set up but it may not be a good idea for this fuck it we'll do the straw some other time even though i really wanted to do it this would hold it that would hold it like perfectly i don't understand why the clamps I'm using aren't good unless. Did I break that other one? I did, didn't I? I did. Oh, this is a good one. 
Oh, I think I found it. Okay. This should work right here. Cool. All right. So I got like a clip that'll hold my straw and I'm just going to set it in my vise. So basically you just got to figure out something to get this straw the same level as your drill. All right. That's not good. But if I go like this and drop it down, that's good. All right. So you want this straw the same level as your drill. All right. So this is an alternative to using swivels. And for some builds, this works very good. All right. So we're going to use this with, I'm going to use this with the, um, the cat track, actually. I'm not going to use it for this fuse clap. So I don't know why I just wasted all that time. All right. So three core fuse clapping. All right. I'm going to use 26 because I have 26 here. I'm going to use 26 and so when you're doing three core fuse clapton's, um, depending on your cores, you want to use a higher gauge because the bigger the gauge you use for your clapton, the harder it's going to be because it's a strong wire. It's going to bind them up. It's going to turn them into a triangle. So you want something that isn't too strong to go on there. So if you're doing 26, I would say 36 is good. 38 be even better. Um, I'm going to do 36, though, because, no, I'm going to do 38. So I'm going to do 38. 40 would be even better, but I'm going to do 38 tonight. So 38 gauge and 26 gauge. So what I'm going to do, this is a three-core fuse clapton. All right. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get out the 26 gauge at about... Um, 24 inches, give it a stretch to make it straight and cut it. And then I'm going to cut, I'm going to cut, um, three eight inch pieces. All right. Three eight inch pieces. So I got one, two, and three. So I've got three 26 gauge pieces. Now, I'm going to want to get these three pieces in my drill. So what I'm going to do is get them three pieces. And I cut myself. Look at that. Cool. I'm going to get them three pieces. I'm going to hold them with a pair of needle noses like this. All right, and then I'm going to take another pair of needle noses or pliers, and I'm going to twist this end. This is important. Everything I'm showing you is important to get this successful. You want these three cores to stay three cores at all times. All right. So you got the three cores. And then I could just bend a 90 in it like that. Now, I could take these three cores. And since there's a 90 bent in there, I'm going to put it in my drill so the tooth grabs it, right? Now, it is very important that these three cores aren't twisted all the way to the swivel. So, if you see the three cores here, you should be able to hold them three cores if you straighten them out and bring them all the way over to the swivel, the same three. There's no twists or anything. Super important if you want this to go easy. And then I'm going to put it onto my swivel and bend it on. So all the way across, I have them three wires stacked perfectly all the way across. There's no twists at all. This is important. All right. So I'm going to 
take these three cores, make sure they're there, and then I'm just going to wrap them around themselves near the swivel, but make sure that them three wires don't get twisted or anything. All right. There you go. I'm going to close this swivel. So now all three cores are going across. Now, you don't have to do this, but if it's your first time doing three cores and you, um, you're you having problems with them, then you're going to want to get something like this. You're going to want to get something like this, a cord lock, and get that on there. But you would have had to put it on there before you put it in the drill, or you would have to take this off and put it on there. Or... These work really good, these hair clips. I have tape over this one, but this is a clicky hair clip, all right? Or you could wrap a piece of ribbon around there, just something as a slider. I'm just going to use one of these clips here. You don't have to use this, but I'm going to. Now, another thing that's super important with these is you need some kind of pliers. I like using nylon pliers. But this is super important. This is one of the most important things with any kind of three core fuse clapton or more cores. Anytime you're doing three cores or more, pliers or nylon pliers are very important. These are beetle-on nylon pliers. Now, you could use needle noses or use some kind of flat-nosed pliers. That's fine. You want to make sure they don't have teeth, but you could use them. But I like to use these nylon pliers. Now... I'm going to get the 38 gauge. I'm going to use 38 gauge. Actually, I'm going to do stainless steel since my cores are stainless steel. I'm going to get this 38 gauge stainless steel. And I'm going to hand wrap it around the beginning so that it locks onto my cores. Then, in the forward rotation... I'm going to spin it. Now I have a lot of 38 sticking out here and I'm going to cut it. Now my nylon pliers don't fit in there to crimp that. All right. Because I just only clapped into a little bit so far. So what I want to do is. So my nylon pliers don't fit in there. I mean, I could move this and clamp over all of it. I could do that. But usually what I do is I just take my needle noses and get in there like that and flatten it. Now, the beginning is super important. If you get the beginning flat, you're really, you should really do good. All right. Now, just, you see how close this thing is? This clamp or slider? That's important. I'm pulling my drill back away from the swivel so that them cores stay tight. I'm going to clap in a little bit. Make sure my cores aren't collapsing. And it doesn't matter. Even if they're only collapsing a little bit, crimp it. Crimp it every quarter inch or every half inch, whatever. These nylon pliers are about a half an inch. So every time I get a half inch, I clamp it. Now I'm gonna slide this a little bit, not too much. Now, something else that's very important is that my fusing wire, I'm not pulling too tight. Like you don't wanna, you don't want to be pulling back on this thing because obviously it's going to wrap it up. I could show you that right now. Watch what happens when I pull this full back. Well, that clamp's working pretty good. Hold on. Too much tension is going to do this. That's what too much tension is going to do. It's going to wrap it up like that. You don't want that. That's too much tension. Now, if you have to reverse, let me get this clamp back. If you have to reverse and you're using anything like 38 or 36, and this wire is now all wrinkled up, right? This wire is all wrinkled up. 
grab the cores like this with the pliers and give the 38 a little tug and that's going to straighten it out a little bit just a little bit it can break if you do it too hard but that's going to straighten it out a bit Now I'm going to try to get back on track since I just pretty much on purpose fucked up this wire. Just to show you what not to do. Alright, you see how close this clip is to where I'm claptoning? So this is a three core fuse clapton. And you, you just have to take your time, move that a little bit. Fuse a little bit. Flatten. Fuse a little bit, flatten, fuse a little bit, not too much tension, flatten, fuse, flatten, all right, I'm going to move this a bit. What's up everybody coming in? Right. So I got this. I'll say what's up to everybody in a second. Let me just get done this three core here because I do have a lot to do tonight. Fuse a little bit. Let me get that closer. No further. Fuse. Flatten. Fuse. Even if it doesn't look like it's making a triangle, just flatten it so them cores stay down. Once you get a bunch fused, you're going to be able to go a little bit more before you flatten. Maybe two pliers worth. So remember I said I do, I do a pliers worth. And then I clamp it. Maybe you'll be able to do two pliers worth and then clamp it. Just, okay, see how this is getting. All right, see how that core is jumping up there? It's starting to make a triangle just a little bit. This is why we flatten. It's making that triangle. So let me flatten it now before it gets out of hand. All right. Now I definitely want to use less tension. And after I get that, I'm going to flatten again. Flatten, flatten. Happy birthday, Addy, I suppose. Is it your birthday? Flatten, flatten. I'm about to have a gap there, so I'm going to take that out a bit. All right. Flatten. I'll show you what I look like back here when I'm doing it. We're halfway done. I'll try to speed this up. Fuse, flatten. If you want to go quicker, just keep these in your hand. Don't put them down every time. And this whole thing I'm doing here is very important for the coils to come up later. Later in this show, kind of, but more so later in later videos and coil plays. This is the first time we're flattening stuff that's still on the drill. First time we're flattening stuff, period.
I guess besides the spiral wire. Just very, very, very little tension on this spool. Think of it like if you're rolling up a, a big old pile of sticks and you want them to be in a nice pile. You don't want them to go in a triangle shape. You wouldn't put much tension on it. Very little tension. Can move that a little bit. Oops. If you make a mistake, just reverse. You can do this. Pull down. So this is three core fused Claptons, which are a super good vape. Actually, these exact specs are going to be really good. Three twenty six and thirty eight would come out to about a point one and eighty anyway. Stainless is going to be much lower. Okay, I'm almost done this with the three cores. Keep messing up. Not too much tension. Fuse a little bit and flatten. Fuse a little bit, flatten. Fuse a little bit, flatten. Move that. a little bit and flatten if you followed every single step and you're still having problems then I guess it's your swivel but if you use the same exact specs do every single step the same exact way and you don't put too much tension on your spool you're flattening it as much as I am then it's bad swivels you need to change your skills or oil them or something. All right. So there is the three core fuse Clapton. There's that. Cut it off there. Three core and thirty eight. And this is what it looks like right there. We'll wrap these up later and get them in an RDA. All right. Cool. <clears throat> so um i'll answer questions at the end this is coil class i got a lot to get done in this video um if you have any other questions that aren't coil related then i guess um i don't know maybe i'll answer them later too but that's usually for coffee talk or people in the chat will answer them or you'll see the answers in the other videos this is good for low builds bs triple parallel not noisy cricket 
do not do noisy cricket with a 0 0.08. That's a hard no. Unless you got the noisy cricket too, it'll work in parallel mode, but no, noisy cricket is a big no no. That's a series mod. Noisy cricket, you have to do 0.33 or higher. The, um, but anyway, the V2 will work in parallel mode. I don't even know if it'll work in potentiometer mode. Definitely not in series. In parallel, yeah, it'll work. All right, anyway, coil class. Back to coil class. Um, so next one up will be cat track. Cat track, um, well, noisy cricket is parallel and series. It's, yeah, it's both. Um, noisy cricket V2, anyway. So, cat track. So, cat track um, is basically if you want to do more cores and also have a flattened look, if you want to do more cores than three, all right? So it's more like 10 cores, 12 cores, something like that. So we're going to use the 32 gauge again, right? And we're going to do, I'm going to do, I'm going to show you 12 cores with 32 nichrome and 32 outside. All right. So everything's 32 in this build and we're going to flatten it. I'm going to show you what I use, show you what I used to use, show you what not to use. Um, so this is the pat track. So this is a, a a lot of cores in one fuse clapton and then you flatten it to get that surface area so these 10 little cores are going to look much bigger than this three core fuse clapton but you could do this with two cores you could do it with three cores you could do it with four cores you could do it up to however many cores you want however big you want that to be you could do so first what we do is we get out our our whatchamacallits our strands all right and actually i'm going to do a single coil just to save on time because it's actually going to take quite a while just to do a single coil so what i'm going to do is i'm going to get out about well, i'm going to get out about six inch pieces something like six inch i am going to stretch them straight all right so there's one, two. Now you could do these on a swivel, but I actually don't like doing them on a swivel. All right, you could though. There's a lot of different ways to do these, but I'm going to show you how the originals were done and how I typically like to do them. There is more than one way to do everything, but I always show you the way I do it. Five. Six. Yes, so typically with these, um, so Twisted Mess's video, he used 30 gauge, all 30 gauge, 30 gauge on the inside, 30 gauge on the outside. I've done it like that. Um, now, you do want to have either 30 or um, 30, 32, 34, or 36 for the outside because you're really hitting this with a hammer. 38 is not going to keep up with all the, all the hammering. Now, also, anything over 30 for the outside is going to be really strong for the outside it's going to be hard to flatten and it's also going to make these cores crumble up so this is a lot like the fuse clapped and that's why i'm doing it is you can't put a lot of tension on the outside so how these typically go is you want to make sure i'm going to get all these together like this All right, I'm going to cut all the ends of these off, all this crap here. I'm going to cut it off. All right, I'm going to pinch down here, and I'm going to run my fingers down. And what I want to create is kind of a flat 
coil here. Now, I don't need all 12 fanned out, but I do want something like this. Okay, I do want them all flat right here. That's what I want. All right. I'm going to do this. Get it down at this end and cut all these straight as well. All right. So I got all these cores nice and flat. Now, last time I did this, I just did it by hand without the straw and without swivels. But this time I'm going to use the straw. You could hook it up to a swivel if you want. So now I'm going to grab these like that. Now all 12 are going to fan out like this. All right. And I'm going to do the same thing that I did with the triple core fuse clapped. And I'm going to twist. Twist these up good because it is 12 cores. All right. And I got something like this going on right now. I would do 10 times 30 though. I would do 10 times 30, not if you go bigger, minus some cores is what I would do. Like if I do 30, I do 10 cores. If I were to do 28, I would do maybe like eight, maybe six cores. 28 is pretty big. That's going to be a low build. No, well, for single coil, I guess you could do, you could do eight if you do a single coil, but. That's going to be a big, I don't suggest 28. I suggest 30 and 32 is really what I would suggest for this. You got to remember, you're trying to flatten this with a hammer. So you got to remember, be smart about the wires. 30 and 32 are what I suggest. Anywhere around there for any of them. I would try to stay around that. I wouldn't get too crazy. I wouldn't put like four pieces of 24 in the middle and clapped in it with 40. It ain't going to work. You ain't going to get the same results anyway. So I'm going to get this in here and they're just going to fan out like that. Now, usually I would just clap in it like this. And the biggest thing is, is you just don't want these to twist up. As long as they stay flat, it doesn't matter how they stay in there as long as they don't twist up too much. All right. So I would usually clap in this. Now, without a straw, they do tend to want to twist up. All right. So I'm going to use the straw. I'm going to grab the straw up here. I'm going to clamp it to my table real quick. All right. And I'm going to get these 12 cores and put them inside of the straw like so. All right. So we just got these cores coming out of the straw like this. like that so when I spin it I'm gonna actually put my draw on slow as well when I spin it they're just gonna keep spinning right. now before I get too ahead of myself let me get my 32 gauge again Gonna get my 32 gauge and I'm gonna put him inside the drill. Stick him in there and start to clap him. Now 
you really don't want to put much tension on this. It's because you're going to be hammering it. So you don't want too much tension on this. Now, it's going to get tighter and tighter as I go. But just try not to put too much tension. At a certain point, it's going to stop closing in as much. And you're probably going to get more of a rounded kind of a deal. All right, so I'm going to start doing this. I'm going to flatten it out just a little bit, but this will probably be the only time I flatten it. I just want to get all them cores in their own little spot like that. And now I really just want to make sure that I get this clapped and looking good. You want a nice tight clapped in as good as you can. If there's going to be little spaces in it, that's okay. They will actually come out later. So you see, I kind of got like a rounded thing right now. It's not really flat right now. I just keep moving my drill back. I'm going to show you what this looks like from far back now. All right, this is plenty enough. There's no sense in me wasting any more time or wire. So I'm going to cut the 32 off. All right. I'm going to cut it off my drill down here. And what I'm going to do is when I cut this, I'm going to leave some of the strands sticking out of the wire. So I'm going to leave about a half inch of the strands on. And that's because it's going to help me in the beginning of this flattening. Okay. Now, we're going to flatten this. The best thing to use, the best thing you would want to get, ideally, what you want is a chasing hammer or a jeweler's hammer and a jeweler's block, which is just a big old block of metal, flat metal, flat hammer. All right. And you also want like a tail because when you hit this, it's going to make a lot of noise if it's not sitting on something. Now, what I used before I got that, like I mailed away for one as soon as I could when I seen Twisted Messes had that in his video. And it came in handy. What I did before that is I got this. I got this adjustable wrench and I would put the wire on this. This would be my block. I'd put my wire on this this same exact wrench, actually. I put the wire on there and use this as my other piece of metal. 
And then I just got the smallest hammer I had. It wasn't the same exact hammer, but it would have to be flat and polished. You could polish it with sandpaper. Like a, you could do like um, 100 grit, 120 grit, and then something like 220 grit, and it'll get it nice and polished. You don't want too many nicks and dings in your hammer right here. All right, like you, this would be okay, actually. What you definitely, like these nicks and dings wouldn't be good, but if you hit it with that metal, that would be okay. But stuff like this would show up on your wire and possibly even break it. What you don't want to use is a waffled hammer. You don't want to use a waffled hammer because that will definitely come up. All right. Probably weights would work. Yeah, weights would work. Some, some vices have anvils on them. Some vices have anvils. So you could use that, but some of them have lines in them. Like that one has a line and has lines in them, so it doesn't work too good for me. So yeah, I would put it on here and I would do the same thing I'm about to show you with that. I would now this is much heavier than this, so you gotta remember that. This is much heavier, so you have to do less hits with this. All right. Now, ideally, chasing hammer, jeweler's hammer, and a jeweler's block. You could get both of these for like 12 bucks. All right, now, what I'm going to do here is show you that I'm going to start. Remember, I left the wires on there down here. Oh, my hands are dirty now because I'm hammers. I left them wires here on this wire. I left them 12 strand sticking out that's where i'm going to start hitting now when you do this it's not so much that you're you're flattening it with a lot of pressure what you're doing is you know how i use this to flatten stuff i use this it's basically what you're doing with this you're not so much hitting down you're flattening it out like this. Like you might as well, you're going like this at the end of every hit. So you're hitting like that. You're going to get so much better results like this than if you just go. You don't want to do that. You want to go. Way better results. I've tested both ways. This is going to look so much nicer and flatten it out so much better. Like that, all right? So, let's get to it. I can't believe I'm already 45 minutes in this video. I talk too fucking much. See, I can't answer your questions. Stop asking me questions. Now, this is going to get super annoying after a while, probably. But I'll try to keep it interesting. All right, so I'm going to start at the very end here, and I want to get this wire at the very end nice and flattened out, and you want to make sure that this wire doesn't twist as you're doing it. So I'm starting at the very, very end, and I'm trying to hit it with the middle of this hammer. I'm trying to hit it with this middle every time and fan it out. And I'm going to show you every once in a while what it's looking like. Now, with this wire, the more time you spend on it, the better it's going to look. It's just a very time-consuming thing. I shouldn't say a very time-consuming thing. But if you want it to look like real, real good, it's going to be time-consuming. So I like to get this beginning nice and flat to start. I want to get it nice and damn near what I'm going to want to see at the end, right in the beginning. And what you do want to do is hit the same side every time. You don't want to flip it over or anything. Just hit the same side every time. Yeah, this could get 
especially watching on camera. That's why I don't really do these too much, even though they're probably one of my favorites. Cat tracks I actually quite enjoy making. I'm just dropping it on there and pushing it. All right, I'm going to show you what the beginning is starting to look like. And what's going to happen is it's going to start curving a certain way. It's going to start curving up or something. And we'll fix that later, probably with a torch at some point. But it's going to start flattening out like so. All right. So let's see if I could get through this in a decent amount of time. I'm not going to go for straight perfection on this one because it would probably just waste too much time. I want to make sure I get to the bone yard and get these installed in a decent amount of time. Now, once I get a good amount done, what it is smart to do is kind of flatten it out with your fingers like this. I might have to get more done in order to do this, though. Yeah, I got to get more done. And you just want to go slow the first pass because you're going to do a couple passes on this. You want to go slow your first pass. Oh, and also, I don't want to start going over here and hitting that way. You go the same way the whole time. You don't want to just switch it up and go, all right, I'm going to flip this around and hit it from this way. No, don't, do not do that. Because what you're doing is you're flattening these inside wires a little bit at a time. So you're just moving all the, I guess, all the tension one way. So if you start switching it up, it's no good. So just keep going the same way. Just like this. Just keep dropping the hammer. And sliding. That's all I'm doing. It's just dropping the hammer and sliding and just being patient with it. And you definitely want to do one coil at a time. Like even if I clapped in eight inches of this, I would have cut it in half and done one coil at a time. You don't want to have an eight inch piece of this. It's going to see how it's curving up. It's going to keep doing that until eventually it makes a circle just because I just keep putting tension there. So it's going to keep curving up, but I am going to flatten it out after my, my one pass. And I'll show you how I do that. And it's going to entail a torch. Flatten it out a bit so I can hit it a little easier. Just did it with my hands. So 
So whose is this? This is actually Blue uh, Blue Eye Goons concept too. Twisted Messes did a video on it, but this is actually a Blue Eye Goon concept. So the same guy that made the aliens made this wire. It's tricky when it starts curling up like this a lot. So it's like a hit and push all in one motion. You want to drive your family nuts? Start making cat tracks right in front of the TV. That's what I do. That's what I do. So I'm only going to go for a four wrap here. So actually, I think I'm going to be finished with my first pass. In a second, I'm going to try to unbend it now like this and just go through it again real quick like this off right quick. I'm going to unbend it again and I need to finish up my just this end. I'm going to start moving this way just because I'm at the very end. So I want to show you, like, just look at this, this wire right now. So imagine somebody told you to coil this up real quick. It's a mess. And it's also, like, it's got a weird tension. I'm going to show you it close up. And then I'm going to show you how I straighten it out. And then I start hitting it again. All right. You see how it's coming out flat? It's starting to flatten. The cores are starting to fan out a little bit more than they were circled. There's going to be parts that of this that look a little better than others. It's starting to look a little polished as well. Because when you hit things with a hammer, it starts to polish them. Now, I'm going to get my voice. Just like we were doing with the with the braids, I'm going to get this wire clamped in something. Now, there's a way Twisted Messes does it without a vice that you could check out on his video. He just does it with two needle noses. He's able to set up his torch in a certain area, and he does 
the uh, torching with needle noses so he doesn't have a vice in the video. So, but I'm going to do it with a vice because I actually just like it better. And if you have a vice, it's just going to be better to use. So what I'm going to do is just like the braid. You see how it's all curved? I'm going to pull up on this and just give it a little bit of heat. I don't even really want it to turn red too much, like at all. I actually would rather it not turn red if I could get it to straighten out without turning red. That would be good. So I'm annealing it. I'm kind of softening up the wire with heat and pulling straight so it straightens out. And it's also going to make it easier to flatten the second time around. So I'm definitely getting some colors here as I do this. Now, one thing that would be good is if I could hit this while it's still hot, but I don't think I'm going to be able to do that because I'm going to want to hold it so it stays straight. So I'm just going to pull it so that it stays straight while it cools down. See what happens it looks pretty good like that i'm probably gonna have to do that again actually as it's hot i just want to hit this i'm doing the same thing as i did but i just want to hit it as it's hot because that usually helps a whole bunch Now, the hitting is going to cool it down also, but it's also going to make it shape a little better for me. And I'm going to hit it on the same side. And I'm really starting to see it come to shape now. not hot anymore now that it's pretty much flattened pretty good I could start hitting it both ways now like I could go from one side and the other it's just that first time around you don't really want to do that These uh, brushing motions with the hammer are very important. I'm actually putting pressure down on it as I do it too. Like I'm kind of, instead of just, I'm really pushing down on it as I roll it through there. This is definitely another kind of coil that you do get a lot of satisfaction out of it when it's done because it took so much time and you actually put like some kind of physicality into it. It's a workout doing this a lot. So. This wire looks a lot like jewelry when it's done. I 
I'm going to show you what it looks like in a second. Man, this flattening. Am I buffering? Weird. curviness I'm getting out of this. All right, I think it's getting too curved for me to hit it without heating it up again. So I'm going to show you what it looks like before I straighten it out. some more hitting but there you go that's starting to get there this end let me put this next to the three core fuse clapton so you can kind of see the differences in wire the top is the three core fuse clapton the bottom is the cat track let me get a couple more hits out of this I think I'm gonna. Ow! Nice dropping the fucking block right on myself. I'm gonna show you how uh, Kent was straightening this out with the needle noses in the one video. So basically, what he would do is set this up so it would just keep shooting out fire. And then he would just do a little at a time. And straighten it out. So. Once you don't burn yourself or you don't light your house on fire. It's just a little butane torch.
like to straighten that a little bit. And I'm going to go one more round with it, and whatever I get at the end of this round is what I'm going to work with. I'm probably going to have to heat it up again, but that's okay. No, this isn't the boneyard, this is the cat track. Actually, it's not taking too long because I remember it was quarter of when I started it, kind of. So I'm just getting a couple last flattening hits out of this, especially in the first three inches of this wire. Because I do want it to look like a cat track at the end of the day. I don't want to go through all this work and not have a cat track. I got some pretty cool RDAs to show you tonight to install into these two. Some old school RDAs. Not too old, but pretty old. Got a Mutation X in there. And something fitting for this coil. All right, I think I'm done hitting this thing. Yeah, I think I'm going to be done hitting this thing for now. Let me hit this in a bit more and going to be it for it. Yeah, so you see how curved it is? We can't wrap that, can we? That's a mess. You wouldn't be able to wrap that nicely. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the vise one more time. Now you got your head in a fucking vise. Fuck me? Oh yeah, fuck me? Now you got your fucking head in a vise. Crazy Face McGee, what's up?
Yeah, jeweler's blocks are awesome. They're great for coil building. Plus, you can make jewelry. All right. So, I'm just going to straighten this bad fucker out. With a little bit of heat and pressure. This time, I'm going to let it glow red. There's any twists in it. I'm gonna get the twists out as well. Sometimes there's not only bends, but there's twists. Now I ain't gonna lie to you. This is gonna be a bitch to wrap. I usually harden up very hard. And they're a bitch to wrap, especially if they're not like absolutely perfectly flattened. thing I would like to do to it before I put it to the side, before I show you and then put it to the side so we can finish the other wire is if you have a pasta roller I would throw it in there but I like to just give it a quick roll in. I feel like this evens out some stuff on all wires makes them look a little more polished just put a lot of pressure on there now it's going to be your choice of what side you wrap it on the upside it probably will be the side that i wasn't hitting the side that was on the block so I'll have to make that decision later for now. This is what I'm looking like. And it could get even flatter than that if I really took the time out. I could really make it look flatter than that. It is 32 gauge, so I couldn't get it too much without breaking. Oh, look at that side. This is the side I was hitting with the hammer. Maybe I will choose that side. All right. Once again next to the fuse clapton fuse clapton's on the bottom cat track on the top Somebody asked about own boy Josh again. God damn. These guys are ruthless. I don't think own boy Josh is coming back, everybody. I hate to say it, but I think it's safe to say that um, we care about own boy Josh more than he cares about making YouTube videos. <laughs> I love me some own boy Josh. Great guy.
Yeah, we just talked about Homeboy Josh two days ago. It's a shame he doesn't hear the people talking, but I mean, damn. I don't hear that many questions about, you know, where Squid Dude with his videos like that. Nobody ever says that. Everybody always own boy Josh, own boy Josh. It's, it's weird. It's not weird. It's just, it's crazy that he has that many followers. But I mean, obviously he had to do something important. All right, so Boneyard. Boneyard coil, we're going to use the jeweler's block and the hammer. This is going to be a twisted build, and it really all comes together when you actually wrap the coil. Now, me and Boneyards have a love-hate relationship, so hopefully I get this. You're going to want to use something like 24 Probably not nichrome though. You don't really want to use nichrome for this. Probably you want to use stainless steel or canthal. So let me find some 24 gauge suitable. I'm going to use 24 canthal. All right. Um, apparently 26 is very hard to do these with because you're going to hit this with the hammer. It's going to want to break when you wrap it. So what you're going to do for a single coil is you're going to get out, let's say, let's get out about 12 inches of wire. All right. 12 inches. Yeah, I, at least I see Squid Dude at events. I mean, Squid Dude's at, like, every event. So he's still within the within the community. That is very true. But I think it's crazy that people – I guess they ask me because they assume that I know him more than most. Which I, I used to talk to Josh more before Coil Wars. Um, I talked to him a lot during Coil Wars, but after Coil Wars – conversations weren't really existent more so before coil wars and boil during coil wars i said you know how much do you want to fucking keep me going through this thing he told me a price and i said all right it's in your paypal you know how much to win this round dude how much you want i need all the help i could get against these germans okay so I'm going to take these two 24s, cut them in half after I straighten them, bend them so I can get them into the drill. Now, I'm going to twist these, but the only difference with this wire being twisted and other wires being twisted is you don't want to twist these too much. You're twisting them very little, actually. So we're just going to get a nice, even twist. Not too much, though. So I'm going to. Yeah, German builders are amazing. Best builders are German. So. You want to almost. I don't even know how to explain this. You want to just do a little twist. I mean, I only did a little bit of twisting here because when I hit it, these twists are going to start opening up. So you want to make sure that you do it so that they open up. So it's a very little twist, very slight twist. So you see, that's a twist there. I'm going to show you a wire that I twisted all the way a little bit ago. That's a wire twisted all the way. This is a wire twisted to do a boneyard. All right. 
you just kind of just want to three twists per inch. Um, I could give you a, I could give you a kind of a measurement. Hold on. So this is 24 gauge. So it's going to be different with every gauge. But let's just say 24 gauge would be. It's more than three an inch. It's like one. It's two twists every quarter inch. So it's eight twists per inch. Two twists every quarter inch, eight twists per inch with 24 gauge is what I did right here. Hopefully that's good. Okay. Oh boy, Josh videos were awesome. We talked about this all the time. Anybody want anybody want to know what my favorite coil to vape is? Anybody want to know what swivels I use? I'm just going to start hating on oh boy, Josh. Hi. I am live. Your door is open. Well, you need to lock it. <laughs> it's your fault. Hola. How do you lock this? Lock it? Well, really, if you don't come in here, you don't have to lock it, do you? Well, that's not my fault. You know, it's okay. All right, lock that door on yourself. Thank you. Peace, honey. Go. Here we go. I'm still here. Bye. All right. So, did you guys get scared? So, what I was told by Ownboy OC in his video, because Ownboy OC has this video. Oh, this wire? This wire was invented by a female coil builder, Amy Jeanette. Amy Jeanette 27? I think that's her name. Amy Jeanette 27, I think. All right. So this was a female coil builder's OC, original concept. Now, same deal. We're going to hit this twisted wire. And what's going to happen is these twists are going to start opening up. Now, the good thing about this is if I don't get this on this try, I actually already have a set built in the notch RDA so I can kind of show you what a good set looks like. So I'm going to show you what happens when you start hitting this. Actually, I need to hit it a little more. Yeah, I've seen on Boy OC's YouTube channel, but he also has um, what he used to do coil builds on was a local vape website. But yeah, he has his own YouTube channel now. It's a good channel. He doesn't do too many videos, but he does he does videos. There are videos, and he did just do an ocular video. But he does have a video on of this on the local vape page. So this is what's going to happen when you start hitting this. The twists are going to start opening up. And they're really going to flatten right at the twist. So this is it before it's hit. And this is it after it's hit. It's going to start opening up.
Now you do have to be careful with these because they do like to break after you wrap them if you hit them way too long. So this isn't like the cat track where you have to hit it like three different times and heat it up and stuff like that. Just going through one or two times should be good. And I'm not sure if I ever heated these up before I wrapped them actually. They're kind of a weird coil when they wrap up. They actually look better when they're a little messy. It's weird. I am going up and down on this one. I'm not sliding it as much as I was the cat track either. You see, I'm just doing the up and down banging. Let's see if that works good. Yeah. Nine. My phone charger? Oh, well, Ava, we'll talk about this later. I don't have one now. You should have took care of it. like now this is really going to come to shape when I wrap it it works take care of it okay I didn't really like how the beginning went so I'm going to cut that off. And what I'm going to do, I was just hitting this side. I'm just going to flip it over real quick just to get it a little flat. And I'm just going to go through real quick and flatten it out by hitting the other side. Okay. So this is what that looks like. Focus, you son of a bitch. There you are. You see that? See how them twists opened up? All right. Now. What's up, Tim? Okay, so. I'm going to straighten it out like this. Tim, I could get you an RDA to use on top of that. I can get you set up with an RDA if you've been using the Sabre. You're going to have to give me a day or two, but. All right. With this, I actually want to use a small bit, like a 2.5. And I'm going to do this first. I'm going to wrap this coil first. So I got a 2.5 millimeter bit, or is it a 0.25? I don't know. It's a pretty small bit. It's not a 3 millimeter. It's the size down, right? Right, so it's a 2.5, so on the coil master, it is a 2.5. Somebody's loud tonight. Now, let's wrap this, and I'm going to show you what happens with this. It actually is pretty cool if it happens. <laughs> Hopefully I did this good. Please tell me it's the best one yet. Don't.
Don't be too rough on it when you wrap it. It's going to start triangling. And it just snapped a bit. Motherfucker. It definitely just snapped a little bit. I think that's what it felt like. So it does kind of this kind of deal. Maybe I should have did it around a three millimeter. It definitely snapped somewhere. I think it, it sounded like it did. I don't see it yet where it happened. Yeah, I can't see where it happened, but I think it did. So it's a coil that looks super cool, but in order to get it looking uniform, you really got to play with it. There you go. Is Drew speaking Dothraki? Now, you're probably asking yourself, Self, I wonder what RDAs Nick has tonight. Let me show you. So first, to install this boneyard, I'm just going to take this two post. <sighs> Let's wait for the boneyard. Let's install the boneyard in a bit. All right. Mr. Tooney, let's first get out an RDA that Twisted Messes used to use a lot in his videos. A Mutation X. Now, this is the Mutation X version 4, so this is like an older Mutation X, honestly. It's got the bottom airflow, but the Mutation X's had decks like this, all right? This was a bottom airflow one, but it was also side and top, right? Yeah, side and top. You didn't have to do top, though, did you? No, you didn't have to do top. You could do top. There was a whole different cap for the top, right? No, it's just side and bottom. Bottom airflow, side airflow, kind of like the BTFC almost. All right. <laughs> I'm showing you now, Alex. I'm glad you asked. Okay. So, I'm going to take this three-core fuse Clapton. I'm going to get my three-millimeter bit, and I'm going to wrap. Whoa. Fuck you. The Clapton started to slide off because I guess I was too handsy with it. So I guess I'm going to do two five wraps if I can. So there's one. Two, three, four, five. Do that. Yo!
All right. Tunes. I'm just trying to install this real quick. I don't know why I'm rushing. Three core fuse Clapton for the first coil. I wrapped it around a round bit, but it comes out in different shapes. That's the whole thing to the boneyard. That's what I was saying earlier, is it really comes to shape when you wrap it. It just happens. I wrapped it around a round bit, but that's the shapes it makes. That's what I was saying earlier. They really come to shape when you wrap them. I didn't wrap it around anything funny. No fun, no games, no, no, no magic used here. It just happens, and you will see it in a second once I get done these. That's why they're cold. It's just the way you hammer them. If you twist them that way, it has to be twisted the way I showed, light twisting. And then when you wrap it, them hard spots want to stay where they want to stay. They don't want to round over. All right. Mutation XV4, which came out about a month after the V1. <laughs> there was a Mutation X out every week. Can you... Focus. Come on, dickhead. There we go. Nice. Nice. Mutation X version four with the triple core fuse clapens. Let's get to that cat track now. How much time we got? Whatever, I'll just wrap it. Which side's better? Now, I think... I think I'm going to put this into the vise to wrap it. Actually, you know what? I have a little bit of time. Three twenty-six and thirty-eight was the fuse clapped in. All stainless. Since I have a little bit of time, I'm going to go through and hit this guy a little more. Because that's how cat tracks are. The more time you spend on them, the better they come out.
Okay, that should be fine now. It was good before, too, but I just wanted to get a little more out of it. Yeah, if you guys do want better braid videos, go check out Crazy Face McGee YouTube. He does braids way better than I do, and he knows way more braids. Has very good quality videos to show it all. So, if you're into braids and you want to learn braids that I've never shown, he's got a couple on there that I've never shown before, ever. <laughs> Tutorials are in English. Okay. Let's wrap this cat up. I wanted to wrap it in the vise. That's right. So let me pick what side I want to show off. I'm going to show off this side. So I'm going to get this into the vise a good bit. And I'm just going to take my time wrapping this because... These can be a bitch to wrap. So. I got the three millimeter bit. Just like I would wrap a staple coil. These are a bitch to wrap. They're just um, this wire, just after you hit it and heat it, hit it and heat it. It just gets really hard. Okay, so I got a five wrap, but I don't think I like the first wrap too much. I'm not sure. I'm going to have to look at it. Yeah, I'm going to take the first wrap out, which I knew I was doing. That's why I did a five. Uh. Yeah. All right, the RDA that I'm going to put this into is the Twisted Messes version 1. Twisted Messes version 1, I did heat treat it a little bit years back. A lot like the Mutation X, only bigger holes, better posts, vapes way better. And this is by Comp Vape and Twisted Messes, the very first Twisted Messes. 
takes an Allen key. Open them up. And just by looking at this cat track, I could tell that I could have did a way bigger cat track. I probably should have used 30. But it don't matter. I'm going to get him in here. I'm going to put down the negative post. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to get one of my Kim Dixon and Merlin stands. Now, I only put down the negative. I'm going to put the bit in there. And I'm going to pull. Ooh. I'm going to pull my cat track tight. Ooh, it's kind of messing it up. So the Twisted Mess's emblem is actually a cat track. Bet you didn't know that. Now, I do want to heat this up just to get it looking a little better, but I will show you what it looks like before I do it. So this is what it looks like right now. I'm going to put it side to side with the fuse Clapton so you can kind of get a, an idea of what we're looking at. Okay. Now... Yeah, I kind of wish I did do different specs on this today, but it's okay. I wish I would have went with the 30 gauge 10 core. It is a 0.18. So I'm going to heat it up and just pinch it tight together because it's going to look better. If it's pinched together. And maybe I should get my ceramics. But where are they? Much better. I 
nice flattened cat track. Let me give you a close up of both these and then we'll do the boneyard install real quick and we will be done. So the three core. Okay. Now let's get us some. Now, another RDA from Comp Vape, the same as the Twisted Messes, same company, Comp Vape. Then they put out a two post, these big post holes, and this was the double vision. It actually came with two decks, which was awesome. And that's where we're going to put this bone yard. I love the double vision. There's also a 24 millimeter version, the Sentinel. So I wrapped this around a round bit, but it comes out looking not so round. So I'm going to just install it there. I'm going to show you a set of bone yards I have as well. Where are you going? Oh, I got it upside down. I bent the leads and then put it in upside down. Come on. Yeah, buddy. All right.
Now let me clear my throat. Did I end up giving away the notch already? No, I got it right here. Well, I got the box here. Right? The box is here. Where's the notch already, though? I wanted to show you. There it is. So these are boneyard duels that I did a while ago. They're not as crazy. That's another way you could get them. They're, they're hit a little less. aren't opened up quite as much, you know, but they're still a type of boneyard. You could use stainless steel. I used canthal, but you could use stainless steel. Um, nah, these are two five or smaller actually. These are two fives. These ones are two five. Yeah, there's holes in this to put your own coils in. It actually vapes really good. Too. I actually quite like how this thing vapes. It's got the bottom airflow on the side. It vapes very good, actually. I actually wish they made one that wasn't notched like that. But guys, what a great show! What a great show! I think Fresh just went live. What am I going to do? Easy. I'm going to go watch Game of Thrones Season 8, Episode 3 once more. So, everybody that stuck around and watched, thank you very much. It was a good show. Um, I wish I could have did duels of everything, but it just takes too long for a couple of them coils. Next week, I forget what I was going to do. Not sure. There's a couple different th ways I could go with next week. So I'm going to have to look at my list and break it down on how I want to do this. I'd like to keep it something a little different every time. I don't want to do like something similar to this next week. So I I'll pick something cool. Um, so, yeah, we got next week. We got Saturday. Um, I should have a pre-recorded out, maybe two this week. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoy Coil Class. Class is dismissed. Go watch Fresh and have fun. I do want to do a show on, on Game of Thrones this week. So, if you don't want to be spoiled... And you see a video of Mark talking about Game of Thrones, maybe don't watch it. I might only talk about Game of Thrones in that video. Oh, if anybody has any questions, you can ask real quick. But 
hey, real quick, I've seen a weird pics of people that have like two coils for holders and then random mesh in the in the middle. Metal in the middle. Okay, so Justin. Back in the day, metal mesh used to be used as wick. Like you would you would just stick metal mesh into this coil. You would wrap it up and stick it into the coil. They would come in sheets. Metal mesh would come in sheets and you would cut it and it, it would be used as wick. You would sometimes put silica wick through there. So stainless steel mesh, they're using that as if you go watch my extension build, same thing. The two co coils were a capture. They used the two coils as posts and the stainless steel was the coil. So the stainless steel would light up before the two coils. It was an extension build. That's all it was. It was a capture build. Maybe I'll do one one time. But yeah, it was just a capture build. So if you go watch the capture build video, the you'll see basically what they did. So um, that's busy. That's always busy. All right. Everybody, I am out of here. Thanks for watching. The KTX Big Daddy. You love the Ocula? Cool. Justin, I don't really like stain. I never vaped one of them, actually, so I can't really judge. Twenty-one seven hundred is the same as eighteen six fifty. Same thing uh, for aliens. Aliens. That's just it. <laughs> for aliens. Aliens. I'm out of here. Peace. I'll do one of them, one of them capture mesh builds, and we'll, I'll tell you how it vapes. I mean, it might vape pretty good because mesh vapes pretty good. Mesh and coil form. We'll do it one day. Somebody asked me for a Maybe we'll do that on Saturday. Somebody asked me for stitch mohawk, and then we'll do that build. We'll do the capture stainless steel capture build, and I'll vape the capture build. All right. So that's what we'll do on Saturday. Stitched Mohawk, capture stainless steel coil. All right. So basically it was two coils holding on to a stainless steel mesh coil. All right. That's what we'll do on Saturday. We could probably even fit something else in there too because neither of them are going to take too long. So I'll think of something else to do with it too. Everybody, peace. Have a good night. Have a good week. It's almost half over. Thanks for watching. Thanks for the likes. Don't forget to subscribe. And I am out.